We weren't even 24 hours into the brand new 2024 MLB season when drama decided to pop up. Ipe, the translator for Shohei Otani, just got fired and stories have been changing left and right. So we're going to break everything down in just a moment because there was a game that happened yesterday. So because this is a baseball channel, I'm going to talk about that game first. Also, the Blue Jays just traded a former All-Star to the Cincinnati Reds. Michael Lorenzen has found himself a brand new team and Giancarlo Stanton is looking pretty good lately. Now, just a reminder, we post these videos every single day. So if you want to stay up to date on the game of baseball, hit that subscribe button. We are getting so close to 500,000 subs. Join the team. We're almost there. Now, before we talk about game two, the Padres and the Dodgers and the Soul Series, I want to just say it's crazy what can happen over a full year. So exactly one year ago today, Otani struck out Mike Trout to win the WBC. And again, fast forward to today, Otani's on the Dodgers. His translator just got fired What's going on? Before we break down Ipe getting fired, let's talk about the game from yesterday. The Padres and the Dodgers as Yoshinobu Yamamoto was making his first start as a big leaguer. He got his first taste and um, it probably didn't taste very good. Pause. After Xander had a single and Fernando Tatis Jr. got hit by a pitch, both of those guys scored as Jake Cronenworth laced a double down the right field line. Again, bringing in both Tatis and Xander. Kim, he played a Cronenworth on a sack fly and then the wheels fell off again for Yamamoto. Machado, he walked before the Kim Sack fly. So he scores on a Luis Campusano double. Campusano is about to have a monster year, in my opinion. Tyler Wade, he made it a five spot, and it couldn't have gone much worse for Yamamoto. One inning, five earned runs, a walk, and a hit by pitch. But a lot of people are saying it wasn't the worst start in the world because his fastball had some run and his curveball graded very well. So maybe it was just a case of bad luck. I don't think that was the case. I think he was just bad. So the Dodgers did get a few runs back, but then San Diego started teeing off again in the third inning. Bogarts, he drove in two on a single to turn it back to a five-run lead. LA's defense, they tacked on two more for San Diego because Max Muncy, he should not be a third baseman in my opinion. The Padres went up a bunch, but don't tell that to Mookie Betts and crew. Mookie clutched up with multiple base runners on and his two-run two-bagger in the fifth cut it to a three-run deficit. And now it's back to a four spot because the Crone Zone is trying to have a bounce back year after being terrible in 2023. Betts, on the other hand, is trying to have an even bigger 2024. That is a two-run tater. His fingerprints were all over this game. Just uh, Luis Campusano, he drove in another run, and Muncy made another error right after that. San Diego, they're now sitting at 12 runs on the day. But will that be enough? I asked the question because Will Smith, he singled in LA's ninth run, and then Mookie wasn't satisfied with a four RBI day. Make it a six RBI night after driving in two on that single. Outman and Hayward score. Now it's a one run ball. Oh, no, no, it's not. Manny Machado, meet outer space. 108 miles per hour off the bat. Ball game. Robert Suarez, he struck out two in the ninth inning. The Padres close out the final game in Seoul, Korea. It was a super fun series, by the way, minus the fact that I had to wake up at 3 a.m. to watch. But hey, it's worth it to grow the game. Now, obviously, that game was kind of overshadowed by the off the field stuff between Ipe and Otani. So let's break that down right now. Full credit to Tisha Thompson of ESPN for bringing this story to light but the thing about this story is it's changing every five to ten minutes it seems like so here is the timeline of events okay so the first report from espn said that ipe was contacted by espn to do this story and in that 90 minute interview ipe said that otani was bailing out a friend so in regards to the wire transfers that was otani's bidding otani felt bad for his friend but they were supposed to be loans and ipe was going to give the money back so all shohei was doing was hey I'm helping out my friend. So then Otani's lawyers came out and said that whatever Ipe just said, it's complete fabrication. That is not what happened. It was actually massive theft. So let me break it down as crystal clear as I can possibly make it. There's a couple different scenarios of what could have happened because again, so many stories have been changing. The first one, Ipe was actually helped out by Otani, his friend, and Otani unknowingly committed a crime by using a wire transfer to pay off bets wagers through an illegal booking operation. And if that actually happened, they could be using Ipe as a fall guy. He could get a golden parachute. Again, this is all alleged. We don't know the full story, but that could be situation number one. Situation number two is that Ipe is so close to Otani, they're basically brothers at this point, that perhaps Ipe did actually have access to Otani's bank account information and made the transfers on behalf of Otani's name. Because the same person that broke this story, Trisha Thompson, also just came out this morning and said that 
Ife lied to her face in that original 90 minute interview. He said out loud that Otani never knew about the gambling problem, never knew about the wire transfers. And then Dodger officials who were in the clubhouse while Ife was announcing to the team that he had a gambling issue and that there was going to be a story coming out. And then players were kind of confused like, how does this pertain to us? If you have an issue, I hope that you work it out. But what does this have to do with the team? And then the owner of the Dodgers, Mark Walters, came out and said that Otani paid off Ipe's debts. And according to the sources that were in the clubhouse, the LA officials, Otani became confused. He was like, wait, I paid off his debts. And then he went to another translator to confirm what he just heard. So according to the recent story change, again, believe what you want. You can't really believe anything at this point because everything is conflicting. Otani did not know about this gambling debt. According to the recent story change, he found out about everything during this post game talk that Ipe had in front of everyone and that allegedly Ipe made the transfers himself. That's the story right now. I guess that's what they're running with. I don't know if I explained that properly. There's so many rabbit holes to go down, but essentially you can sum it up to there's only two things that could have happened. Did Otani unknowingly commit a crime and help his friend by paying off his illegal booking gambling debts? Or did Ipe have access to his bank accounts? Those are really the only two situations that I can think of. But if you can think of anything else, let me know. But if it is the first case where Otani did it unknowingly committed a crime, that's probably why it's now being changed to Ipe stole. There was massive theft because they might use the guy as a fall guy because if it comes out that Otani committed a crime that's very very bad so there you go Ipe has been fired by the Dodgers I don't exactly know what the future holds for Otani because a lot of people were running with a tweet that I put out in December it was a factually incorrect statement that I said that in Otani's contract that he could opt out if certain employees were fired by the Dodgers and I said that Ipe could have been in that clause that's not the case Shohei Otani can opt out if the GM Andrew Friedman leaves the Dodgers or the owner, Mark Walters, chooses to sell the team or if he moves on. So if those two guys leave the organization, Otani can opt out. Ipe is not in that deal. I just wanted to set the record straight. So let me know your thoughts and opinions after everything that you just heard. Again, I'm sorry that there's conflicting reports, but that's what we have to go on. Story started one way. They finished another way. They're probably going to change in 15 minutes after I upload this video. <sighs> Now let's go ahead and talk about a trade that just happened. Former All-Star for the Blue Jays, Santiago Espinal, is now on his way to the Reds in exchange for a minor league righty, Chris Mc... Elvain, I probably botched that. I'm sorry. Now, this happens a few days after it was announced that Matt McClain is going to be missing some time for the Reds. And Matt McClain is an absolute stud. Back in 2021, Espinal was very, very good. He hit 311 with a 376 on base percentage over 92 games. In 2022, he made his first All Star game. But from the second half of 2022 all the way through 2020, he's been pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Now, he fits the mold perfectly in Cincinnati. He's going to be a platoon guy that can play a bunch of different positions. So, that's why they got him for a depth piece. And they're only doing this because Matt McClain is now down with an injury. I don't really know much about Chris McElvain aside from the fact that he's an eighth round draft pick from the 2022 draft. Last year, 96 innings between low A and high A, he turned in a 3.75 ERA and he had an 8.2 strikeouts per nine. So he's... He's decent. That's all I really have to say. And according to fan grabs, Santiago Espinal doesn't even crack the opening day roster against righties. He might get some starts against lefties, but there you go. Like I mentioned in the intro, Michael Lorenzen has found himself a brand new team. He is going to the Rangers. This is yet another depth piece. And the funny part about this is, does this mean that they are closing the door on a Jordan Montgomery reunion? Because a four and a half million dollar contract from Michael Lorenzen is pretty rich in my opinion. I don't think Lorenzen is very good. Did he throw a no hitter? Absolutely. Was he completely useless after? After that yes now he was a whole lot better once he was relegated to the bullpen but in the six games after the no hitter michael lorenzen had a 9.23 era he had 27 earned runs in 26 innings pitched i don't think that he's very good but that's just me i believe that he's much better as a bullpen arm and according to fan graphs they agree they have him slated as a long reliever in the bullpen and that's perfect for michael lorenzen the active mlb leader in home runs john carlos stanton has 402 home runs which i think is the lowest for an active home run leader to start a season in quite some time because Pujols is gone, Miggy's gone, but Stanton had three home runs yesterday. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that Stanton can mash his way back into a Hall of Fame conversation if he can approach 500, 550 home runs because he looks decent right now. He's lost some weight. Maybe leaning up is going to really help him. What do we think Stanton is about to do in 2024? Is he about to reclaim his status as one of the best DHs in baseball or is that contract about to look even worse? Well, everyone, that's going to do for today's recap. A very weird start to the 2024 
2024 MLB season. But make sure you guys do me a favor, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're brand new, and also I've been posting MLB The Show on my gaming channel, Fuzzy Gaming. I'll see you over there. Have a great day.